Before you go in the comments and say this video has a clickbait title, I'll give the too long didn't watch. I can get five gigabit ethernet interfaces working at the same time on the compute module four, but in total, I can only get about three gigabits of throughput. But the more interesting question is how did I do it? And is it possible to get even more speed? Well, after my failure to light up a monitor with an external GPU in my last video, I figured I'd try something a little more down to earth for this video. And to that end, I present to you this four interface gigabit network card from Intel, the venerable i340-T4. This card is typically used in servers that need multiple network interfaces, but why would someone need so many network interfaces in the first place? Well, in my case, I just wanted to explore the unknown and see how many interfaces I could get working on my Pi with full gigabit speed on each one. But some people might want to use the Pi as a router, maybe using the popular OpenWRT or PFSense software, and having multiple fast interfaces is essential to building a custom router or switch. Other people might want multiple interfaces for network segregation, for redundancy, or to have multiple IP addresses for traffic routing and metering. Whatever the case, none of that is important to me if the card doesn't even work. So first, let's plug it in and see if it works. I went to plug the card into the Compute Module 4 I.O. board, but found my first obstacle. The card has a 4X plug, but the I.O. board only has a 1X slot. And no redshirt, Jeff, I still don't want you to Dremel into the connector on the board. Instead of doing that, I bought this handy 1X to 16X adapter cable and plugged the card into that. Then I booted up the Compute Module with the latest Pi OS build and ran LS PCI. And to my delight, the board was actually found and listed, but I learned from my GPU testing to not be too optimistic, at least not yet. The next step was to check in the D message logs and scroll up to the PCI initialization section and make sure the bar address registrations were all good. And lucky for me, they were. This card doesn't use nearly as much address space as a GPU, so it at least initializes itself correctly right out of the box. So now that I know the card is recognized and initialized on the bus, could it really be that easy? Is it already working? I ran the command IP link show, which lists all the network interfaces seen by Linux, but I only saw low, the localhost network, eth0, which is the built-in ethernet interface on the Pi, and wlan0, the built-in Wi-Fi interface. The other four interfaces were nowhere to be found. I plugged in a network cable just to see what would happen, and the act LED lit up green, but the link LED didn't come on at all. And since I didn't see any other errors in the D message logs, it led me to believe that the driver for this card wasn't installed on Pi OS by default. My first attempt to get a driver was to clone the Raspberry Pi Linux source and check with make menu config to search for any Intel networking drivers in the Linux source tree. I didn't find any of those, so I turned to the next idea, searching on Intel's website for some drivers. The first page I came to was the Intel Ethernet Adapter Complete Driver Pack, which looked promising, but I noticed it was over 600 megabytes and was listed as OS independent. And after I looked at what was in the driver pack, it looked like half of Intel's chips over all of its years of existence were supported. I just wanted to get the i340 working and I really didn't care about all the Windows drivers and Windows executables, so I kept searching. Eventually, I landed on the Linux-based driver for Intel Gigabit Ethernet Network Connections page. And this page looked a lot more targeted towards Linux and a smaller set of devices. So I went to download the IGB driver and found that to get the download, you have to accept a license agreement, which makes it a little more annoying because I can't just download the file on the command line using wget. Anyways, I downloaded it through Chromium and then expanded the archive with tar xzf. Then I went into the source directory and ran make install like the instructions told me to do. The install process said it couldn't find kernel headers. So next I went ahead and installed them with sudo apt install raspberry pi kernel headers. Then I ran make install again. This time it spent some time doing the build, but eventually the build aired out and I saw this error about an implicit declaration of function is digit. Undaunted, I did what every super advanced computer scientist does when faced with adversity and copied and pasted the error message into Google, or actually DuckDuckGo in my case. And luck was with me because the first result mentioned that the problem was a missing include of the ctype.h header file. Armed with that new knowledge, I edited the file that was throwing the error, which was named igb underscore main.c, and I put an extra include line that included linux slash ctype.h. 
This time when I ran make install, it seemed to succeed, but then at the end, when it tried copying things into place, I got a permissions error. So I followed XKCD's advice and told sudo to make me an install, and this time it finished compiling with no errors whatsoever. Thanks, sudo. I could have used modprobe to attempt loading the new kernel module immediately, but I chose to reboot the Pi and cross my fingers, and after a reboot, I was surprised and very happy to see all four interfaces showing up when I ran iplink show. So the next step, which is much more exciting to me, is to see if the Pi can support all five gigabit ethernet interfaces at full speed at the same time. I've already tested the built-in ethernet controller at around 940 megabits, so I expect I'll get at least that much out of the four new interfaces individually. But the real question is how much bandwidth can I get out of all five interfaces at the same time? But I ran into a problem. My home network is only a one gigabit network. And even if I set up five computers to pump data to the Pi as fast as possible using the iPerf network benchmarking tool, the network will only put through a maximum of one gigabit. So I had to get a little bit creative. I had my home network and my MacBook Pro that I can use for one of the interfaces, but I needed to have four more completely separate computers to talk with the compute module with their own full gigabit interfaces. So I thought four computers and they need to all have gigabit network interfaces. Where could I find four computers to do this? And then I remembered I have a Raspberry Pi Dramel cluster. It has four Pi 4s, and if I connect each one to one of the ports on the Intel card, I'd have my five full gigabit connections, and I could do the test. So I grabbed the Dramel football, opened it up, pulled a stack of Pis out of it, and then I realized I'd have to scrounge up a bunch of USB-C charging cables because I normally power all these Pis via my decidedly slow one gigabit PoE switch. And I can't run power over the direct ethernet connections between the Intel card and the Pis. So I put together a bunch of USB-C chargers, reflashed PiOS to each Pi, and plugged them all into the Intel card. To make it so I could remotely control the Pis and configure their networking, I set them up so their wireless interface connected to my home Wi-Fi network, so I could connect to them and control them from my Mac. At this point, I could see the wired links were up, but they used self-assigned IP addresses, so I couldn't transfer any data between the Dramble Pis and the compute module. So I had to set up static IP addresses for all the Pis and all the interfaces. I'm not going to deep dive into IP and networking in this video, and to be honest, I think networking is half voodoo magic myself, but if you want all the details, like how I used three private IP ranges and two test IP ranges, check out the GitHub issue linked in the description of this video. Anyways, I edited the etsy slash dhcpcd config file on each of the Pis and on the Compute Module 4, and I signed static IP addresses that mapped everything together. Then I installed iperf on all the Pis to measure the bandwidth. Finally, once I could confirm each individual Pi could ping the CM4 through its unique network interface, I ran iperf in server mode five times on the compute module, one for each interface, and then I simultaneously ran iperf on each of the Pis on my Mac, one instance connecting to each interface. And the result was pretty good, but not quite as good as I hoped. In total, with five independent gigabit network interfaces, I got 3.06 gigabits of throughput and I individually tested each interface to make sure they got around 940 megabits, and they all did when they tested on their own, so theoretically, five gigabits was possible. I also tested three interfaces together, and all three were able to saturate the PCIe bus with about three gigabits of throughput. But then I tried also testing three interfaces and the Pi's built-in ethernet, and noticed that I still only got about three gigabits. I tried tons of different combinations, like three Intel interfaces and the onboard interface, two Intel interfaces in the on onboard interface, and in every single case, the maximum throughput was about three gigabits. I was really hoping to be able to break through to four gigabits, but it seems like there may be some other limits I'm hitting in the Pi's networking stack. Maybe I'll figure something out after I post this video, or maybe do you know some setting I could adjust? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, benchmarks are great, but even better than knowing that you could get multiple gigabit interfaces on the Pi is realizing you can now use the Pi to do some intelligent networking operations, like behaving as a router or a firewall. The next thing I'd like to try is installing OpenWRT or PFSense and set up a fully custom firewall, but I've run out of time on this particular project and I'm hoping that it helps inspire other people to do some new things like that with the Compute Module 4 and network cards like this Intel i340. 
I can imagine some nice router builds, at least for one gigabit networks, using the CM4 and a PCIe card. It'll certainly be cleaner than trying to set something up with a bunch of USB 3.0 network dongles. But why did I stop for now? Well, I have a number of other PCI cards I'm testing, like the SATA card, and I want to keep adding all this data to my Raspberry Pi PCI Express card database, which you can get to with the link in the description or the card that's right above me. In addition to other cards I'm testing, I have three major new projects on the way, but I can't spill the beans on them just yet. So please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. And these cards I'm testing aren't free, so thanks so much to everyone who's supporting me on GitHub or Patreon. Until next time, I'm Jeff Geerling. Eventually, I landed on the... Ugh, not you again. Ring, I don't care that somebody's at the back door right now. Then I went into the source directory and ran... and, and ran... Clone, 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 clone. Okay. To get the download, you have to accept a license agreement. Oh, not ring again! This time, when I ran make install, this time, this time, this time, this time, when I ran make install, woo! I could have used mod probe to attempt loading the new kernel model, model, the kernel model, and realized I'd have to scround up, scround up. Somebody keeps texting me. Boop doop boop boop. I don't know why I did that. I have a number of other PCI cards I'm testing, like. Uh, it's right here. This one. Different thing. A PCI Express. Oh, shoot. Uh-oh. Camera just burned up. Oh, no. Hey, no, 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 no.